Welcome to Eldora Speedway in Rossburg, Ohio. The USAC Sprint Cars are on speed. Tonight, it's the first ever Mopar Million. Hello again, everyone. I'm Rick Benjamin, joined by former USAC National Champion Larry Rice. What a night we have in store for you tonight. No one's ever seen anything like this before, Larry. It's the biggest non-wing sprint car race ever anywhere in the world. They've sold tickets to people in 47 states, Australia, and England. They've got 138 cars. They've been talking about it for months, and now we're ready. And as the name implies, a million dollars will be paid out here tonight. $200,000 to win. I mean, that's a Winston Cup purse. Yes, and it pays $10,000 just to start the feature. There's a lot of these guys that would be real happy just to be there. A win here could certainly make your year, if not your career. Let's take a look at the format for tonight's event. Well, this is an Earl Baltus format. It's not a regular format. You get two qualifying laps, fastest one counting. Then there are 10 heat races. The top two are the only two out of the 10 heat races that transfer into the A main. The third and fourth transfer to the B, five and six to the C, and so forth. So the only people guaranteed a spot in the A main, you have to run one or two in your heat race. And if you qualify quickly, you might also get to start at the back of the A main. Yes, the fastest two qualifiers who do not qualify through their heat races will get to start 21st and 22nd, which gives a guy an incentive to qualify very well. Not that he didn't already have one with this kind of a purse. But you also uh, take the top four out of each main event or constellation race. They transfer to the B main, to the A main, C main, to the B main, and so forth. And it pays $10,000 just to start the feature, so that's a big prize. Yeah, that's probably double a normal winner's purse in most events. Yes, and there's a lot of guys be happy with that, believe me. Well, let's show you some highlights from Friday night when the 10 heat races were run here to start setting the field for the Mopar Million. Brian Hayden on the pole, Nick Neighbor alongside row one, Kevin Huntley and John Haydenreich making a rare sprint car start. Veteran Dave Darlin in one of the Coons cars, and there's Tracy Hines in the Dynamics 69. Ted Hines, his brother, starts in the fifth row. He's a midget veteran. Yes, he is, and they take these guys and they invert the top six. So Tracy Hines, with quick time, starts six in this heat race, Makes it a lot more interesting when you do that. He's got to finish in the first two. Dave Darlin right alongside and veteran Corey Kruzman in one of the Tony Stewart cars, the 21, back there as well. Up front, Brian Hayden in the 2H, Nick Haber in the 22. Show you some highlights. This is a restart, and Tracy Hines hard into the wall off of turn four. He got upside down very hard. Tore the front wheel off of that thing. You can see Kyle Westmiller involved. That's his brother, Ted Hines, who stopped behind them got out and ran down there to make sure that Tracy was okay because it was a very violent flip. If you've never been to Eldora, the speeds here are very high, the crash is very violent. That's right, it's a very, you run so close to the wall that it's very easy to get in trouble here. And of course, a big cheer from the crowd as he crawled out of that car. But remember, here at Eldora for this event, you have to run the car you qualify. You can't switch cars. We'll have to, you know, he did get a switch. Right there you can see he was touched, barely touched the left front by Dave Darlin. And when he did, he got into the wall and everybody else, including Terry Starks and Kyle Wissmiller, just along for the ride. That's Wissmiller in the 2K, the white car. And there's the a little bit of a slide job. Darlin got into Hines. You saw it there, the 71 car brushing Hines in the 69, and he was just along for the ride at that point. Exactly. This was the first race of the event, this first race of the night. Everybody very, very anxious to do well, and, you know, uh, they just touched wheels, that's all. Oh, they're going to have to winch the 69 up in the air to get it off the racetrack. Tracy may be able to make the feature if they can fix the car. This is another complete restart. No laps on the board. Brian Hayden in that yellow 2H dives to the lead. Yes, he did. Look at neighbors, though. He hangs right on up on that outside. Kevin Huntley right behind both of them. Usually the outside is a preferred groove here at Eldora. Dave Darlin on the bottom in that Mopar machine, the 71, running as a teammate to uh, Jay Drake tonight. Brian Hayden, Kevin Huntley running first and second in the early laps. Yeah, and you can see the guys that are veterans here at Eldora have a little bit of an advantage. Darlin and Huntley both have run here an awful lot. Oh, Darlin uh, lost the front end there a little bit, headed for the fence, but didn't get into it. Four laps to go, still Hayden out in front. Kevin Huntley second, Darlin though stalking, trying to get to the front. You've got to run in the top two. You've got to run in the top two. If you don't, you've got to run the B main and nobody wants to run that. Look at this, both of them go around Brian Hayden at the same time. Now they're in good shape. Brian Hayden though, 
He's out. He's in the B main right now. Three laps to go, and Darlin says, hey, maybe I can win this heat. Now, there's not a lot of money up for grabs here. This is all about starting position in the A main tomorrow night. Well, you know, this race doesn't pay a lot of money, but it does pay a lot of money to start the A main, 10 grand. So virtually, the first two positions in this race do pay $10,000. So that's, that's a pretty good payday. Leader is the five, Kevin Hundley, Dave Darlin, former national champion of the 71, running in second spot. A one-off drive this weekend for Darlin, although he's hoping to stay with the Coons team for the balance of the year. Last time around, we'll see if Darlin can get the job done here, move up and get around the five car. And of course, if you finish first, you get a better starting position than you do if you finish second. So you definitely want to try to win this race. Out of turn four, and Kevin Huntley in the five car will score the victory in the first qualifying heat for tomorrow night's Mopar Villian A main. Dave Darlin will earn the other automatic transfer spot to the feature. Yes, and you can say that Brian Hayden and Nick Neighbor will go to the B main. Corey Cruzman has got a long way to go. He's going to have to run the C main tomorrow. The format very similar to what we've seen for years at the Knoxville Nationals. Six features, four drivers move from the F to the D to the E and so on, trying to get to the A main. Let's take a look at some highlights from the second heat from Friday night. Pavement veteran Jeff Bloom on the pole in the 1S. Turner Malone alongside of the 97. Kevin Doty in the 25. Back to the fifth row, Terry Fletch and Marv Pfeiffer, Brett Poole and Al Thomas, Steve Buckwalter, and Aaron Fry. Some drivers that we don't ever see with you, Norman. Well, when you put this money up, you're going to see a lot of guys come and try to try to take some of it home. I mean, if you make the C or the D, you make uh, quite a good uh, amount of money. I mean, it's a million bucks total. That's a lot of money. I can't remember the last time Jeff Bloom strapped into a dirt track sprint car. He's on the pole with the one, but Critter Malone gets the jump on him at the green. Well, of course, Critter Malone is a dirt track expert, mostly in the midgets, but he has been running some sprint cars here recently, so he's been doing a pretty good job in it, too. Isn't it? Jeff Bloom is way wide down there in three and four. Bloom runs in second spot. Kevin Doty and Derek Scheffel in that red car on the bottom. Doty in the Christmas 25, a car we're used to seeing. Haven't seen much of Kevin, though, this year. No, not a lot, but, uh, of course, They've been running together before, years previous, and uh, you know they like each other, they get along well, so they decide to come here and give this thing a shot. Guy to watch, Tyler Walker in the Curb Records 35 car. Now, he's a World of Outlaws regular in sprint cars. He has a lot of laps here at Eldora. Yes, he does, and he's run a lot of non-wing cars, but he had, and he had second quick time, and I'm telling you, the his qualifying lap was just awesome. He went into turn one without lifting. He had me holding his breath. Uh-oh. Tire down. Left rear tire. What a oh, bad break. Oh, boy. Tyler Walker in that Curve Records machine had his eyes on an A main starting spot here, trying to finish in the top two. He will not be around at the finish. And we've got a car upside down as well. That's Jeff Blue. Yeah. He got into the wall down there in three and four and got upside down. As you said, mostly a pavement guy. But uh, when you put up the big bucks, they all come out. So Bloom with a hard impact. He's twisted the front of that frame. I would think even if he were able to come back, of course, on qualifying, he won't make it anyway. But his night's probably over. Yeah, his night is over. He's moving around, and he was OK. Pick up the action here. Seven laps to go. Still Critter Malone out in front. Kevin Doty running in second position. Yeah, Danny Smith just got around Derek Scheffel. Danny Smith is also another one of those guys that does very well here at Eldora. You know, the guys that are veterans that know how to run the top of the racetrack here usually uh, can, can do better than the guys that are younger and haven't quite worked their nerve up to bump that <laughs> wall yet. Derek Scheffel in fourth spot in the red number 21. Doty in the 25 trying to track down Critter Malone. Six to go. They get the halfway signal this time by. Boy, for Malone to make the A, I think that'd be quite an accomplishment. Oh, it's going to be a great accomplishment for him because uh, it might be his biggest payday. He's done very well in the midgets. He's won some pretty good races. But in a sprint car, this would be his biggest victory if he wins his heat race. Malone doing a nice job rim riding here at Eldora, which, as Larry has said, is the preferred. Well, oh, another car upside down. Violent wreck, the 26 car. That should be Jesse Hockett, who's gotten into the wall in turn four. Coming up onto the front straightaway, Larry, he goes way high in the air. And that's a place where we've seen a lot of guys wreck over the years. Yeah, what happens here at Eldora is if you just miss it a little bit getting into the corner, through the corner, you bump that wall with your right rear. It sucks the right front end. There you can see that he's okay and out of the car. But then that's when you take that big ride, which we've seen happen already here tonight twice. Another restart, four laps remaining. No change up in front. The top two make it to the A feature tomorrow night, which pays $200,000 to win. Here comes Danny Smith in that white four on the bottom, trying to snake a qualifying spot here in the last couple of laps. Well, obviously, the top groove is the place to be, but Danny Smith trying to find a way to get around those two guys in front of him. 
because there's a huge difference between being second and being third. Yes, second puts you directly into the A. Third means you've got to try to come out of the B tomorrow night. Down the back straightaway, it's Malone. Kevin Doty, Smith tries to dive bomb from third. I think he's going to come up short. Yeah, he certainly is, but that was his only chance. He had to try to get a big slide job, run in under him, slide up in front of him. He just didn't quite have the speed to do it, so he's going to have to run the B main. Derek Scheffel comes home in fourth spot. Good run for Critter Malone. Very impressive for a heat victory here at Eldora. Yeah, he did a great job. Kevin Doty, of course, ran second. Smith and Scheffel will be in the B main. Tyler Walker will get to run the A main, even though he finished fifth because he had second quick time. So he will get one of the provisionals. Tracy Hines will get the other. Everybody else is going to have to make it to their heat. They will have their work cut out for them in the remainder of the weekend here at Eldora. We'll be right back with feature action in a moment. A million dollar pie tonight at Eldora. Our IRL fast qualifier, Tracy Hines. He's with Dave. Tracy Hines is the IRL fast qualifier here at the Mopar Million. There's never a better time to be fast qualifier, but it's not been an easy outing for you so far, has it? Yeah, you know, uh, this Hoffman car was really fast qualifying. Both sessions, we were pretty good. You know, can't do it without our sponsors, Hoosier, yeah, Twister, Tide, Kroger. All the guys came on board, you know, especially for the big race. Um, I hate that uh, you'll get to see it on the replay of the, of the uh, heat race that my version is I got taken out. I'm not afraid to tell anybody about it. I'm, I'm going to avenge it in the feature. Now, let me ask you, your qualifying lap had everybody talking. You just bonsai into the corner. What do you have to do to psych yourself up to drive it that hard here at a big, fast track like Eldora? Just have a good race car. Um, I really love this track at Eldora. Our car was just good all night. Um, that's probably got me more upset about the crash again just because I had such a great race car. Uh, we went out the second round, which was, you know, would have been like 140 something on the track, and our time was fast enough to be third quick, including my fast time. So these guys just gave me a real good race car. It's just my job to put it where it needed to go. Let me ask you, who specifically are you sore at regarding the heat race? Well, I'm just, I'm mad at Dave Darlin. Uh, I feel like he slid into me um, before we even got across the green flag. Um, you know, I'll have to see the tape to make sure, but from what I heard on some of the replays that it was exactly how I felt it was. I was on the high side, just coming out of four for the green and got slammed into the wall. Saw it coming and lifted. Never any shortage of drama here at the Mopar Million. Now Tracy Hines able to smile, Larry. What a night the Hoffman team put in to fix that race car. They went home, took them all night, got back here at the racetrack at 2 o'clock this afternoon, but they did get the car fixed because in this event, you have to run the car that you qualify. You can't replace it if you crash. And uh, Tracy Hines, quite honestly, pretty lucky just to be in this event. 20 laps in the C main. Four will transfer. Shane Cottle in the 5G is on the pole. Young veteran Boston Reed in the Lucas Oil 2B starts alongside. Hud Cohn in the silver number 20 lines up third. Mitch Wismiller back with us in that white number seven. He will start fourth. Veteran Roger Rager from Minnesota in car number 51 goes fifth. Brian Stanfield has the 21X in sixth. Dustin Smith starts in the fourth row with the 77S. How about Johnny Parsons in the five? The only six-cylinder sprint car I've seen in the last couple of years, but it's here tonight. John Ivey and Jared Wilson in the 7J in row five. Brandon Petty in the Arctic Cat 3AC. Corey Cruzman in Tony Stewart's Mopar number 21. The seventh row, Josh Sloan in the 4X. Veteran Kent Christian in the 1C goes 14th. Kevin Briscoe in his familiar number 21. Casey Schumann, Ronnie's son in car number three, make up the eighth row. Derek Davidson in the white 10T. And Tim Clark in car number nine. Terry Pletch, another veteran in the 29B. Mike Miller in the 77. The 11th row, Troy Klein in the Haas CNC 11C. Jerry Coons Jr. out of Arizona. Tony Elliott in the 11E, Brian Gerster in the 42G. Round out the field, you've got some fast guys at the back. That's right, Troy Klein and Tony Elliott both transferred out of the D main, so they have to start in the back. And of course, you got Briscoe and some of those other guys back there in the middle of the pack, too. 20 laps to go, the C main is underway at the Mopar Million. Cottle goes to the lead. Cruzman trying to work the bottom and gain some ground early on. You've got to run on the top four. That's right, and you can see Shane Cottle right now chasing Boston Reed as Boston Reed Got our, you can see he's got one of our cameras on that car, but man, oh man, he got a great start. Got around Cottle quickly in turn two to take the lead. And the free AC, Brandon Petty has spun on the first lap. So we'll get a yellow flag, most likely a complete restart. He's around down in turn four. He started pretty deep in the field, but now he'll have to go clear to the back. So that's a tough break for Brandon Petty. That car hasn't run a whole lot here the last part of the season. If you don't make the top four and your time wasn't good enough, you go home. 
Right, but this is a break for Mitch Wismiller. He's going to get to start. He missed the last start because he had some problems with the car. At least he's got a chance to make the main event now. Pushing him down pit road up onto the banking, trying to get the seven car fired. Wismiller will drop in at the rear of the field as we will start one more time all over again. The three AC, Brandon Petty, presumably also will get a chance to fire up and join the back of the field. Yeah, both of those cars will have to stop, drop in at dead last, so they've got a long way to go, but uh, slight chance is better than no chance at all. So Shane Connell in that white number five, the 5G will get back on the pole. Boston Reed on the high side of row number one, that's Hud Cohn lining up third alongside Kevin Briscoe in the black number 21. Third row, Rager in the 51. I don't think Roger Rager's been in a sprint car in a long time either. No, he's been running some Silver Crown cars, but he's been running uh, at least non-wing sprint cars. He's been running some uh, wing sprint cars up in Minnesota, but uh, not very much non-wing stuff. Of course, that's where he got his start. He was big in USAC back in the late 70s and early 80s. Roger and Johnny Parsons Jr. combined, I'd say, what, 60, 70 years of racing experience uh, in those two alone? A lot of experience. And that six-cylinder that Parsons is running is, uh, you know, it looked pretty stout. It doesn't take horsepower here as much as it does smoothness, and that six-cylinder that yellow number five back there. It is very smooth on this racetrack. Getting set to go green, 20 laps on the board for the C Main, part of the Mopar Million. By far the biggest short track open wheel payday ever. Put on by the legendary Earl Baltus here at Eldora Speedway. Ready to go racing. Reed on the high side gets the drop on Kyle as they head for turn one. Yeah, that outside uh, spot is really the preferred line, and he took advantage of it and beat everybody into turn number one. A bit of dust here tonight. Heavy traffic, of course. Everyone with one thought in mind. Get to the top four. Johnny Parsons in that yellow five is right there. A cone on the high side. They're battling for the spot. There's Cruzman in the 21. Yeah, Cruzman's coming up through there, trying to make that uh, top four, which is the transfer spot. Those are always the tough spots everybody wants to be in. These are in six. The many-time SCRA champion goes to the bottom in three. Kind of out of the gas there. You can see getting a, getting the car hooked up is the key here. Today. It's it, absolutely. This racetrack has had 138 cars run a lot of laps around here. So uh, just getting traction to the ground is the big, uh, the hardest thing about it. Listen to that car break loose. You can hear the engine note just change dramatically, unlike a lot of places we go. Yeah, and uh, sometimes, oddly enough, you'll be on the gas a little harder through the corners than you are on the straightaways because it gets very slick on the straightaways. Battle for position, 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth. That's Jared Wilson in the black number 7. Right behind Cruzman as he drops to the bottom again. Yeah, Cruzman's trying to figure out a way to get around these guys by running down there and giving a little slide job. But uh, everybody that you get around at this racetrack is going to be very difficult because they all want to make that A-man. Huge stakes tonight. The pot is big. The jackpot to, for a win here is unbelievably large. Cruzman dive bombs, picks up two cars going into three. The classic Eldora slide job, and he gets both of them. He gets by a head cone at the same time and takes over that spot. What a good job. A cone and Cruzman now putting on a battle for fourth. And Johnny Parsons right there in sixth position. Coming off the second corner, down the back straightaway. Cone refusing to give up. He makes a move to the bottom on Cruzman. Let's take a quick timeout. Right back with more of the C-Main. Back on speed, coverage of the Mopar Million at Eldora with Larry Rice, Cybrick Benjamin, Hud Cohen in the 20. Ryan Stanfield here in the 21K fighting for that final transfer, Larry Rice. They sure are. So far, Stanfield's been able to hold him off, but Hud Cohn has been trying every trick. He's been trying that slide job. He just hasn't had enough. Oh, look at this. They Almost, touch right there. Yeah, pushing him down the back stretch here. Seven to go. There'll be six to go this time by. Now the inside move by Cohn in that silver 20. Yeah, that was a disaster looking for a place to happen uh, there because if you hit him a little too hard, you're both going to be upside down. If you get him in the wheel, that would have been two cars flipping. Exactly. And he uh, he got against him but didn't hit him very hard. And that was what saved both of them. And again, he gets down there and almost touches him again coming off the corner. Johnny Parsons in that six-cylinder car, the five right there to try to take advantage. He's having trouble kicking the back end of that car up, and he's hanging right with him. Well, he sure is. There's no horsepower there, but it's very smooth, and he's been hanging right in there. If those guys make a mistake, He's going to get by. And look at this. Troy Klein clear from the back. 21st. He's up there doing battle. He and Tony Elliott started in the back. Elliott in that blue number 11 in the mix as well as they battle for the final transfer. You've got six cars under a blanket here. Less than five to go now. All of those guys battling for that fourth and final transfer spot. The first three guys are pretty well gone. And remember, Troy Klein came out of the D-Main, so he's done a great job along with Elliott, who's right there. Line started back in the 11th row. He's gotten by Johnny Parsons. He's got his sights set on Hudcomb now. And he's working the bottom, making it work one of the few 
drivers to do that. Well, you know, that, that little slide job thing is working pretty good for him right now. He's getting a lot of straightaway speed. The whole key to that slide job is straightaway speed, and he's getting good straightaway speed off of turn two, down into turn three. Now, let's see if he's going to slide up there. He went way to the bottom. It's what you do is you force that guy in second or behind you to get out of the throttle. That's what he did. Hudcoat got out, dove down under him, and took the spot back. That was a good job by Hudcoat. Trying to hang on, Klein trying to work the bottom and get the spot back again. Parsons and Elliott right behind. Two guys with a ton of experience here. Here comes Elliott to the inside of Johnny Parsons. Yeah, and you can kind of tell when you're going down the straightaway whether you've got enough speed to try that slide job. White flag is out. Austin Reed still leading this thing. Looks like he's, oh, he banged the, the wall. wall. Reed in the 2B may have to give it up, but I don't think so. Shane Cottle will get second. Reed the winner. Watch the battle for fourth. Here comes Cottle. Third spot to Corey Cruzman. They're in the show. What about fourth? It's going to be Troy Klein defeating Hud Cohn and Tony Elliott. So Troy Klein, he makes it through the D and makes it through the C. So uh, he's got a long way to go in the C, but at least he's still got a chance. He did a great job. He passed a lot of cars. Now Boston Reed, the question for him will be, did he damage the car when he backed it into the wall? Well, I don't think he hit it hard enough. If he had, if he had hit it hard enough, uh, he probably would have a flat tire. So Reed, Cottle, Cruzman, and Klein will move to the B, and they'll have a shot at making the A main. That's where all the money will be handed out later tonight. In victory lane, Vince Welch with our win. Congratulations, Boston. I know you uh, won here earlier this year, so a little disappointed to have to come from the C main, but you made it look easy. Was it as comfortable as it looked? No, I mean, the car was pretty good. We kind of screwed up a little bit on setup uh, yesterday, but I knew Scott Menick would... Uh, He's a guy I won even if we, you know, I screw up. So, you know, he's my guy. Um, he obviously put a good setup on there. We just got our work cut out for us uh, to get through the B and then hopefully to the A. I got to drink a few more Red Bulls to get, get all this energy for these laps. We've seen that it's obviously much easier coming from the front. Now you're going to have to come from the back and go into the B main. How do you get up to the front and finish in that top four? It's tough right now. I mean, it's kind of a one lane track, but hopefully in three and four is getting a little rubber. Maybe, you know, that will get out two grooves. But right now it's kind of tough through one and two. But three and four hopefully is where you can do some passing. 15 laps enough? 20. 20? 20 in the B. I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to give it our best shot. This Lucas Oil car is really good. He'll need those extra five laps. Boston Reed. Well, Larry, does he have any advantage because he has run a race already here tonight? Yeah, because this racetrack changes. Sometimes it gets a blue groove, so I think it will be an advantage for him. Boston Reed will have the opportunity to move to the B and again try to qualify for the night's 30 lap A feature. $200,000 to win. More from the Mopar Million in a moment. Welcome back to Eldora. As you would expect, an overflow crowd here for an event like the Mopar Million. Yeah, Earl likes to give away the big money and he always likes to get lots of people there to watch it. Let's take you back to Friday night, show you some highlights from some of the heats. The third heat, Matt Neely, Roger Rager in row one, Greg Wilson, Pennsylvania Stevie Smith in row two, Brian Tyler, J.J. Ailey, the sprint car champion in the third row. Row five, Sport Allen from Florida, J.D. Turner, Michael Bertha and Todd Allen, Steve Wilmot, Tom Patterson in car number 11, shotgun on the field. Neely on the pole, Rager in the 51. Look at Stevie Smith there in the black band at the 19, trying to get up to the front early. Yeah, Roger Rager is going to use that cushion. He's a guy that always likes to run real high at this racetrack and stand on the button. We'll see if he can pull this off. Stevie Smith into second spot, of course, the great World of Outlaws veteran. His dad, Steve Smith Sr., a great sprint car driver, turning the wrenches. I don't think he's ever been in a non-wing car before. He's never been in a non-wing race car. Didn't really know how to set the car up. He set it up with about 16 inches of stagger. Everybody else is running about six. Oh, oh look at Rager. this. Rager on the gas, does a 360 and keeps it going. Oh, man, is he lucky. He spun right in front of that entire field, went to the bottom of the racetrack, and everybody missed him. Let's move forward, eight to go as we pick up highlights from the third heat Friday night. There's J.J. Yaley, brand new race car, new version of the Twister, really radical with a lot of tubes hanging off the back, a lot of weight transfer in that car. Oh, look at this, Matt Neely has hit the fence, uh, tore the front axle out wow. underneath that car, and that's pretty much going to end his evening, I'm afraid. They don't drive too well with the front wheels up in the air, and Neely grinds to all. Here's what happened to him in three and four, just gets too high. Yeah, he got forced up there a little bit high, and when he got up there, he got into the fence, and it happens so often here, and once you hit the fence to the right rear, it sucks the front end in. Luckily, he didn't get upside down. 
Brian Tyler in the six that got by on the bottom. Lap seven, we're back underway. Yaley to the bottom in that brand new Tony Stewart number 20, trying to get by Stevie Smith, but Smith just drives away from him. Yes, he certainly does, and Yaley's got that thing set up soft. I mean, he's lifting the front end. He's trying to get all the traction, all, all the weight to the rear wheels that he can, but still, Stevie Smith just uh, kind of walks away. If you're a sprint car purist, you probably don't like the way that 20 car looks. I think it looks more like a super modified than a sprint car. Well, they actually made him take some of the body panels off of that car that uh, when they got here, so he wasn't very happy about that, but they want them to uh, maintain some sort of look like a sprint car anyway. Stevie Smith looks nice and clean and fast and strong, and he'll pick up the checkered flag in the third heat Friday night here at Eldora, the Mopar Million, for a guy who's never run a non-wing car before. What a great run. A great run, and he's running Goodyear tires. I haven't seen those for a while. So Smith and Yaley move to the A. Tyler and Dean Franklin will have to go to the B Saturday night. Roger Rager, despite that 360, he gets a shot at the C main. Well, he came back up through there. He passed a lot of cars, but uh, still has to go to the C. Here are fourth qualifying heat. Some highlights from Friday night. Brian Stanfield and Tim Cox in row one. Bill Rose, Mark Jessup in the second row. Brent Kading, Bud's dad in the third row with Jay Drake. Tony Elliott, Derek Davidson in the white number 10 in the fourth row. Show you the rest of the starting lineup. Should be about 14 cars all together. Chris Gentry, A.J. Anderson in row five. Kenny Carmichael and Mark Longworth. Jimmy Davies and Brent Matus out of Pennsylvania in the 5G bring up the rear. So some strong teams again in this uh, fourth heat. Well, that's right, and the top six, once again, are inverted, so anybody that's uh, the fastest qualifiers are up in the front of this heat race, but the guys behind that are really going to have to work their way up. Jay Drake in the Vital Express 67, looking for a good run here to get to the A, quickly qualifying. We're underway. Take him down into turn one. Stanfield in that black 21 is the early leader. Yeah, he used that starting position to his advantage. Tim Cox in that 320 car takes second again from a good starting spot. Look at Bill Rose on that white number six as he stays right in the middle of the racetrack and goes back past him. Jessup in the 14J. There's the 320 of Cox. Rose in the six trying to get around Stanfield. You've only got 12 laps to get it done in these heats. Well, that's right. And uh, Bill Rose is looking very strong as he's able to run down in the middle of the racetrack. And look at this. He gives that Eldora slide job. Goes around Stanfield. Now can Stanfield repay the bill? Oh, yep. he touched him. <laughs> he Robin's did more than repay. <laughs> yes, he did. Rose to the bottom gets the lead. Stanfield will try to get down under him again as they go to the back stretch. Jessup is right there, though, in third. Slip and slide, dip and dive. They did a lot of that, but uh, Billy Rose wins the battle and takes the lead. Good run for Rose in the 6R. Jessup with a nice drive to second spot. Stanfield now sucks into third. Cox, here's Drake in fifth spot. He needs to get up on the outside and get going here. Well, he certainly knows that. He's going to uh, He's got to finish the top two to make it into the A main. And he's got a lot, a couple of cars to pass. Oh, he's right on the cushion now. The front of the 20 car of Tim Cox up in third. Drake moves to fourth around Stanfield. Seems to have it going in the 67 car. Let's see if he can get the job done here. Well, he's found that little groove right up there on the cushion around the top. And uh, Mark Jessup running up there, too. He can't get, doesn't have anything for uh, Billy Rose right now. Coming up on halfway in this 12 lap fourth heat. Highlights from Friday night. Oh, in trouble. Jay Drake has gone into the wall and might have even gone over in the 67 car. He's knocked the front end off the thing anyway. Yeah, he knocked the front end off. He just got up there and did this classic uh, slap it with the right rear, slap it with the right front. And when he did, he tore the axle out of the thing. He's nice stuff. Wow. Jay Drake, a guy you certainly think would have a shot at victory lane here in the Mopar Million. He will not transfer to the A feature tonight. Back underway. Leaders down the back straightaway. The battle is for third right here. Stanfield trying to get under Tim Cox. Jessup runs second. And the last lap, Bill Rose all alone in that 6R out front. Yeah, he stayed right in the middle of the racetrack. He didn't run up there on the cushion except off of the corner, and that was good enough to bring him home a victory. Great run for Rose, your winner of heat number four, and he earns a transfer spot, at least a $10,000 check out of the A main. Jessup also goes to the A. Cox and Brent Kading will have to run the B. Ryan Stanfield will go to the C. Now, some highlights from heat number five Friday night. Dustin Smith on the pole in the 77. That's Don Droud Jr. in Gary Stanton's car. Mike Hess and Dickie Gaines in the second row. John Stanbro and Jack Houdenschild making a rare non-wing start. Ken Christian and Travis Whitney, the fifth row. Scott Orr and Leonard Lee. Mitch Cunningham, Dwayne Spill, Mark Boyer, and Kurt Winker, your starting lineup of 14. Again, 
Some great cars in this field. How about Gaines in that second Hoffman car? Yeah, they brought out their second car. There's a lot of money out here. There's a few guys that brought two cars just for that reason and put some pretty good drivers in there. Don Trout from the outside pole in that white Gary Stanton number 75 goes to the front. There's Gaines to second spot. Ottenchild to the high side of the four. He's right in there too. Well, all three of the guys who started on the outside of the first three rows now running one, two, three because it is an advantage, especially down there in one and two, it looks like, to be on the high side. Of course, Ottenchild with a lot of wins here and wing sprint car action over the years has run plenty of USAC races too. So he's a guy certainly we'll want to keep our eye on here this weekend. Well, he's taken a lot of Earl Baldus's money here at Eldora over the years with the the million, you know, the uh, fifty grand win yeah. race, the hundred thousand dollar win race. He's won both of those. He's won the Kings Royal, the historical big one. Larry's referring to, and uh, Jack with his eyes on an even bigger payday possibly here tonight. This is highlight action from Friday night. Gains to the bottom in the fifth heat, gets by Droud to lead. Yeah, Droud moved down in the middle of the racetrack. Gains moved even lower, gave him that little slide job and moved in first. Now then. Gaines goes down off of the cushion down into the middle of the racetrack. But Jack Houghton-Child up high at the wall, Larry. You've said that's the place to go. That's why they call him the Wild Child. That's exactly why they call him the Wild Child. He'll give you a thrill, and he's going to run that top. If it's there at all, he's going to stay up there and use it to his advantage. Gaines in the 69 continues to lead. Jack Houghton-Child at age, what, 47? Climbing the banks at Eldora and going to the point. Boy, and that's the real danger here. If that guy that you're passing doesn't see you coming off the corner, He's going to slam you into the fence, and uh, you're going to be in a world of hurt. But he used it to his advantage, as you said, and went on ahead. On to the fourth car, all alone out in front. What a great run for the Ohio veteran. One of his home racetracks, he will win. He number five at Eldora on Friday night. Well, it's a well-deserved victory and a very popular victory here. As you said, kind of a hometown guy. He and Jack Hewitt have always been a couple of the favorites here. Jack Houghton-Child grabs the win in the fifth qualifying heat tonight. He moves to the A feature along with Dickie Gaines. John Stanbro and Don Droud will run the B. Dustin Smith able to advance to the C earlier. We'll be back with coverage of the B main at Eldora. Welcome back on Speed, pushing off the USAC Sprint cars for the B feature here at the Mopar Million. Controversy last night. Fast qualifier Tracy Hines and Dave Darlin got together. Darlin's in the A, and he's with Vince Welch. Dave Darlin, one of those running for the $200,000 first prize in the A main tonight. How about this format, Dave? Well, it's uh, you know it's quite a different event for us. You know, there's a lot of a lot of cars here, and you know a lot of stake. So we just uh, gotta come out and do our best, and you know with the Keith Coons car, with the Mopar power, and. And the Vital Express sponsored car, we're, uh, we're in the show so far. Starting 11th in the A main tonight. And uh, had a good car so far all weekend. So we're looking forward to it. You and Tracy Hines tangled a little bit in the heat race last night. Uh, what happened there? Well, you on the start there, the inside row got a little better start. And there was a gap between him and the car that he started behind. So I, uh, it was better if you can get a run off uh, down the straightaway up, off the top. So I filled that gap up there. But I, you know he, uh, he had a good run coming off the corner, I think. And we touched wheels a little bit, sent him crashing. But you know, I thought I had the, uh, you know, the, the gap was there for me to fill. So I was moving up there, and um, you know, there's a lot of stake here, like I said. So we're just racing hard. Nobody's giving anything away here at the Mopar Million. Well, that's the other side of the story. That's right, and I guarantee you, nobody's giving anything <laughs> away here for this kind of money. And, and we've known all along that you know there was going to be a lot of stake, and there were going to be some guys taking some extra chances here. Let's take a look at the B main starting lineup. Danny Smith on the pole. Brian Tyler from Parma, Michigan alongside in car number six. Second row out of California. Bud's dad, Brent Kading, John Stanbro in the 57. He won one of our televised events from Lawrenceburg earlier. Row three, Eric Gordon and the son, Bud Kading, lines up sixth in his own car number 29. Move to the fourth row of the starting lineup for the Mopar Millions B main. Travis Rylad in the 29R. He's a great 360 driver. Matt Westfall in the 23S. In row number five here tonight, Derek Scheffel in the 21S, Levi Jones in that 38 car. Yeah, and he looked pretty good last night. We'll have to see what he's got here tonight. Damian Gardner out of California in car number 45. He's an SCRA star. Nick Neighbor in the 22. He had a good night last night in the heat races to make it to the B. Tim Cox did the same thing in the 320. Gary Stanton's car for Don Drow Jr. Yeah, and Don Drow just got that ride recently and hasn't run a lot of non-wing sprint car races. Back to the eighth row as we give you the 24 car lineup. Veteran John Scott from Pittsburgh, Indiana. Brian Hayden in that yellow 2H. He also made it out of Friday night's heats. Yeah, and he led for a long time and faded there at the end. 
Rick Zeal has the 20Z in the ninth row. Steve Cerniak out of Pennsylvania in the 17H starts in 18th position here in the B. And as we take a look at row 10, another Pennsylvanian, Dean Franklin in the 42. Alex Shanks in the 1C will start in the 20th spot. And now drivers who transferred from the C, the winner, Boston Reed. Yeah, Boston Reed, Shane Cottle, both of those guys got a long way to go, but they were pretty quick, as was Corey Cruzman. And Troy Klein came from the back in the C to make it to the B. Only four drivers will advance to the A. Right, so he knows that you can pass cars here. He came from 21st. So he's got to do it again here right now. Only 20 laps to get it done. Up front in the four car, you've got Danny Smith, Brian Tyler alongside in that six. We're underway, the B main of the Mopar Million. And the four car, Smith to the early lead. And look at those guys, they went four abreast into turn number Whoa. one. Searching for traction here on a pretty loose racetrack. Oh, and already somebody, that's Shane Cottle yeah. into the wall. Cottle has spun, whacked the wall with the 5G. Jason Gocher's car, yellow already. We'll have a complete restart. And Cottle kind of bent over there. I wonder if he uh, maybe dinged himself a little bit. Here's a look. He's up on the high side, trying to pass John Scott. Yeah, he got on the outside. Scott didn't see him. He just forced, and we talked about that a little earlier. If you get forced into the fence out here very easily if that guy doesn't see you. Cut down the left rear tire. Don't know if they'll be able to fix the car. Looks like some of the bars are broken on the front end of the 5G. So Cottle's night may well be over in the B before it really gets started. Tough break indeed for the young veteran driver. We'll be back with more from Eldor. Back on speed, getting ready to rumble. 20 laps in the B feature. Complete restart after Shane Cottle's problem. This is Boston Reed. We've got a camera in his car tonight. Yeah, here goes the ride because he's in the back of the field. Got a long way to go. Tyler gets the drop on Danny Smith this time as we go back to turn one. A lot of scrambling behind them. Only four drivers get a shot at the big payday tonight. Well, that inside spot's not the best place to start, and this time he couldn't take advantage of it. Oh, oh Troy, Troy Klein. Klein in the 11. The Haas CNC car goes around up between turns one and two. He must have had some contact with somebody. We'll see if we can get another look at it here. Well, I'm sure he started to make a big move there early yeah. in the event. Oh, you can see a couple of cars got together up there. He got in the back of Dean Franklin, kind of a chain reaction. He had no place to go and just spun. A couple of the uh, white cars, Cerniak and Shanks, I believe that is, uh, directly in front of him. Right, right there. was there. another car right in front of Cerniak's machine, and almost three tangling. Yeah, that was Hayden in front of them, but those two guys tangled. Uh, Franklin hit the brakes, and uh, of course he had no place to go, so Klein spun. Klein sitting there hoping for a push, but it looked as though some things were bent on that race car. The guy to watch here might be John Stanbro in that red 57. He was so good at Lawrenceburg, really likes Eldor. That's a fast car. Yeah, he won here earlier in the year, so he likes this place. And it's not a brand new race car, but he really runs good on the dirt with that car. And that is the great veteran Brent Kading out of California. Bud's dad in that black number 29 down at the bottom. Well, he's won just about everywhere and just about everything imaginable. Loves the big money shows. Came to the Midwest to go for the big prize here tonight. Back underway on speed. Big scramble down into one. Ryan Tyler, though, it looks like he's going to win the battles. He's got that cushion. That's the place you really need to be. And he does pull off the win. Stanbro goes into second. Stanbro, the red and white 57 car, moving behind Brian Tyler in the second spot. Third spot to the four of Danny Smith. Yeah, Danny Smith uh, tried to stay on the bottom of the racetrack, uh, two, one corner too many, and let Stanbro get by him. So now he's moved back up where everybody else is, uh, down there in one and two, especially. Everybody running the middle down in three and four, though. Right, Kading fourth in that 29. Good to see him here tonight. Yeah, but his son right behind him. So those two guys battling for the transfer spot. <laughs> that could get interesting. Yes, it could. Eric Gordon back there in the red number 62, one of the BWB cars. And then that's Levi Jones in that red 38 also in the mix. Yeah, and look at this. Levi Jones gives him a little slide job, and uh, Gordon says, nope, I'm going to do it right back. Travis Ryland a little further back in another 29. That's the white car. That's the car that he's had so much success with in the ASCS Tour. He runs those 360 wing cars. It's very fast. Oh, look at this. He tried. He had a good run down the back straightaway. He tried to give a slide job to those guys. Couldn't make it, though. Gordon and Levi Jones still side by side for position. Classic Eldora racing back and forth. Slide jobs inside, outside, and that's really what you see here all the time. Well, that's uh, what everybody pays the big bucks to come and see. They want to see these guys passing each other, and you see plenty of it here. Turn four, drivers choosing different lines for eight. Matt Westfall of the 23S, that's the black car. Ryland in that white 29 up high. Meantime, Gordon in 
the head of this group of cars. You have to get to the top four to make the A. And he's going to have to uh, step it up because yeah. those guys in front of him pull it away. So I'm sure all these guys are hoping for a yellow so they can probably make some adjustments to the cars from inside the cockpit so they can catch up. Austin Reed in the 2B, the Lucas Oil car, started way at the back after winning the seat. We thought he might be able to come up through the field, but uh, I don't know, Larry, he needs to make some big gains quickly here. Yeah, it's pretty tough at this point. Austin Reed back in 18th, the third of the way home. Tyler, Stanbro, Danny Smith, and the younger Kading looking at qualifying for the A. Back on speed, the Mopar Million, the USAC Sprint cars. That's John Scott in the 83. Five laps to go. Brian Tyler's led just about all the way. Yes, he has. Now he's into lap traffic, so he's got to negotiate this if he wants to win this race. And you can see right there, they're slowing him up a little bit. Brian Tyler in the sixth car. Good dive to the inside to put away a lapped car. He'll come up on John Scott next. He's got a very comfortable lead over John Stanbro, who's in second spot. There's Stanbro on the inside in that car with a red nose, the 57. Yeah, that lap traffic slowed him down. Dave Stanbro a chance to catch him. We take along a ride with uh, Boston Reed. That's Damian Gardner right in front of him. He's trying to get around, but he's still pretty far back in this field. And you can see this racetrack. Oh, he really got close to the wall right there. Let Troy Clark go by. But this racetrack is really slicked off. So many races over two nights, so many cars, 138 cars here, that, uh, you know, it just, it's going to get slick. It might take rubber, but it doesn't seem to yet. That darkness that you see that's kind of shiny, that's how it's slicked up, and that is where the rubber has been laid down here on the clay. Boston Reed back in 20th. I'm surprised, Larry, that he couldn't move up any further at all. With three to go, Tyler's just long gone. Right, and the only place there's any real traction on this racetrack is right up next to the fence where you can touch that wet dirt. Not very many guys running up there because it's very dangerous. Plus, uh, there seems to be a little bit of rubber laid down, down at three and four, especially where you can get a hold of it get some traction. Big battle low for the third spot. Bud Kading, Danny Smith. Remember, only four will make it. These guys have to be careful not to make a mistake at this point. Boy, they sure do. You want to move up into the A main, get a little better starting spot, but you certainly do want to make the top four because that's where the big bucks are. A mistake by Kading or Smith could take both drivers out. White flag in the air. One more time around the half mile high banks. Here in Eldora, there's Stanbro directly ahead. Tyler's long gone. Yeah, you can see he's still working on the lap traffic, does a little slide jump. Ooh, you don't want to make a mistake there. Stan Bro's not that far back. Alex Shanks in the 1C, but your winner is Tyler comfortably. Stan Bro is second. Danny Smith, Bud Kading will make the final transfer spots to the A main and the shot at the $200,000 to win. And Tyler pretty quick, but Larry, the key, I, you, you said it, you've got to find traction here. you got to get some traction. That's a brand new car that Brian Tyler's in, so obviously it's working real well for him. He's got to be very happy with it. So Tyler flips the visor up and backs out of it. Now you start thinking about the A main. You've qualified. What do you do? Do you let air out of the tires? Do you change the stagger? Do you change the shocks? How do you set it up? Maybe all that stuff before the A main. Who knows? <laughs> well, these drivers and teams will have time to think about it. Not much time, but they will have some time to prepare. Or the A main. Your top four, Tyler Stanbro, and you see the rest there. Levi Jones in sixth, Gordon and Westfall. They have to load up and head home. Dave Argerbright in victory lane with our winner. The goal was always to make the Mopar Million, and you've done it. Brian Tyler, tell us your thoughts this moment. Uh, you know, it's I'm really happy for one. You know, that was probably the easiest ten thousand dollars I've made in a long time. But you know, uh, you know, I'm happy for the guys and the crew, and you know, they've been working hard and everything. And, you know, uh, it's going to be hard to pass on. It's starting to lay a lot of rubber in just one lane, so it's just going to be a follow the leader out there right now. So slide jobs are going to be really critical. Um, you know, you're going to have to make it good when you dive in there and slide up into the rubber and not get, take the guy out in front of you. So coming from the back is going to be pretty tough, but we're in, and, you know, that's a lot better than a lot of guys can say. Is it a moment like this when you, you're you mixed between you want to breathe that sigh of relief, but yet you still want to win the next race? How do you balance that? Uh, it's pretty tough at times. Um, you know, I, am, I know I'm in right now, so now we need to go to work on the car and see if we can't get it fast and be able to, you know, last in the rubber. You know, that's going to be a big thing. Tires are probably going to want to pop. Uh, you know, people may run out of fuel if there's a lot of cautions. I started wondering after all them restarts and everything, if, you know, if I put enough fuel in it then. I understand that you had such a good time last night that uh, you had to do well so you'd have an excuse for the party you had. Uh, it actually wasn't last night. It was kind of the night before. I think that was some of my problem yesterday, but not really. I mean, we had a good time the night before. The guys and the crew and, you know, sponsors and all that got together. And, you know, we, we did throw a few back, but 
you know, we're in the show, and that's what all counts. Now you can celebrate again tonight. He's in the Mopar Million. But he's got his work cut out for him, Larry, because he's got to start so darn far back and only 40 laps to come up through there. Well, that's right, 40 laps to go, and it is going to be a very good race because you've got so much talent in this field. Let's face it, 138 guys, it's all down to 26, and they're the best of the best. It'll be a great lineup. We'll show it to you when we continue coverage of the USAC Mopar Million on speed. We'll be right back. Welcome back on Speed. We're at Eldora Speedway in far western Ohio alongside Larry Rice, Cybrick Benjamin, Vince Welch, and Dave Argerbreiter downstairs getting close to the A main of the Mopar Million. Let's show you some more of Friday night's heat race highlights. 16 had Johnny Parsons and John Scott on the front row. Veteran Damian Gardner from California, Jonathan Venner, Todd Kane, and Shane Cotlin in the third row. Corey Smith and another SCRA star, Troy Rutherford, started in eighth spot. Tony Bieber from Ohio, Jerry Niemeyer of the 66. Scott Hatton and Randy Fink in the sixth row. Kevin Biesecker and Brian Rubel rounding out the 14-car starting lineup. And Gardner and Benner to move to the front row. You get only two chances to start this race. Oh, oh, we almost had a crash back there. Shane Cottle in trouble. Yeah, the two guys who started in the second row got to move up. Yes, because the front row failed to bring them across there evenly the first two times, so they moved them back a row. That's going to be a big disadvantage for those guys. And red car, that's Todd Kane in the 1W. He moves to third behind Damian Gardner. Race leader, meantime, has started to pull away. Johnny Parsons in fourth. John Scott back up to fifth spot now. You can see Parsons running right up on that groove, but look at this, Todd Kane. That's an important spot. This is the transfer spot into the A-Main. Damian Gardner on the high side hangs on, but Kane is all over it. Final couple of laps here in this 12-lap heat, showing you highlights from Friday night as we get ready for the A-Main. And Kane to the bottom of three and four. Clean, quick pass. Just the big old Eldora slide job. You go to the bottom, you slide up to the top. Meanwhile, Jonathan Benner continues to lead. He really took advantage of that opportunity to start on the outside of the front row. He's just driven away from the drop of the green. He's going to win easily here in this heat and earn a transfer spot to the A feature. Yeah, if he gets it hooked up like that, he could have a chance. Look at him. He's very happy. That's a big payday for him. <laughs> he knows it's at least $10,000 just to take the green in the A feature later tonight. He and Todd Kane go to the A. Damian Gardner, John Scott had moved to the B. Johnny Parsons, one of the two drivers who got a shot at the C earlier tonight here. Part of the Mopar Million. What an interesting format. Now let's show you some highlights from Friday's seventh heat. John Ivey and Sean Walden started on the front row. Mike Brecht and Levi Jones in row two. Eric Gordon with Dean Jacobs from the All-Stars. Ryan Howard and Tim Clark the fourth row. Joe Roush, JT Stapp in the fifth. Josh Cunningham and Danny Sheridan. Dave Pepperack and uh, Kenny Carmichael. Shotgun on the field. Again, an interesting mix of drivers. Yes, certainly is. And you can see everybody taking it trying to dive somewhere to get a big advantage here early in the going. The top, though, seems to be the best place to go early in the event. That's Dean Jacobs on the high side in that blue, number 29. Wow, and he's come from sixth spot already, challenging for the lead. John Ivey up there for the moment, but as quick as Jacobs seems to be, well, you've got to figure he's a driver we're going to have to think about in terms of who gets to the end. Inside move out of turn two. Diamond's off of that corner, tries to use that slide job, couldn't do it there. And it doesn't appear that that's the best place to do it. Like everybody else, going into the corner, not coming off, is probably the best spot. And he makes it work right there. Sean Walden there in the former Aaron Berryhill car of the 97. And Jacobs gets by him, dropping Walden to second spot. He's got his hands full, though, if he's going to try to make the A here. He's got uh, plenty of competition for the runner-up spot. Yeah, Mike Breck back there in that yellow car having a very good run. So far, hasn't been able to find a way. Now then, he's trying that same sort of move. And, uh, you know, it is taking rubber. You can see it right there that he was able to stay low off that corner and still gain. Well, Benton out of Arkansas gives up the second spot. Final time around, Dean Jacobs comfortably in front, but Mike Brecht closing in on him. Well, Dean Jacobs, another one of those guys that doesn't run very many non-wing sprint cars. But boy, he uh, certainly looks like he's got it hooked up in this heat race. Dean Jacobs loves to run here as well. Of course, the All-Stars make Eldora a regular visit a couple of times a year. So Dean knows his way around in the checkered flag. Dean Jacobs, a rare USAC start, makes it to victory lane in the 17th. He and Mike Brecht go to the A. Eric Gordon and Levi Jones, as we have seen, got a shot at the B. John Ivey got to go to the C earlier tonight. But Jacobs and Brecht will be in our starting lineup for the A feature, which is coming up tonight here on Speed. 
Back at Eldora, getting set for the A main, the Mopar Million. Every driver being introduced, Larry, gets a trophy tonight just for making the race. And they will treasure it come from Earl Baltus, believe me. Here it is, shaking everybody's hand. And of course, Earl will hand out the checks a little later on. One guy who hopes to cash a big car owner's check tonight is the Winston Cup champion. He's with Vince Welch. Here's the guy that's in the role of car owner tonight, but I know Tony Stewart would love to be out there shuffling it around Eldora, <laughs> wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, I miss this place, especially uh, being behind the wheel of an on-wing sprint car around here. So, uh, But if you can't be a, a driver tonight, the best you can do is be a car owner and with two cars. So uh, just really proud of, of Corey and what J.J.'s doing tonight with our Mopar cars and uh, you know, hoping uh, J.J. have a good race here in the main. What makes this racetrack so difficult? Uh, it's it's just big. I mean, it's bigger and faster than most guys that run sprint cars are used to without a wing. So, uh, you know, that's why you're, you're seeing the wing cars, the guys that run with a wing a lot with the Outlaw Series, Stevie Smith, uh, uh, Jacobs, uh, you know, Jack Hodenshaw, those guys go really good here because they're used to the speed. So, uh, you know, they don't go in and pitch the car sideways. They, they can run it a lot straighter and they're used to going fast. So, uh, you know, it's probably the, the intimidating factor that you got to be about a foot off the wall and, uh, you know, got to be on the gas while you're doing it. You talked to JJ. I know you're talking to Corey here just a moment ago you talked to JJ a little bit about the fast way around here and sharing some of your experience with him you kidding me when uh, when he moves on at the end of the year to bigger and better things I'm gonna be stealing all his notes and his knowledge I mean he's he's on the top of his game in, in non-wing sprint car racing and, and he's the best non-wing sprint car driver in the country right now so uh, I'm not telling him anything I'm trying to listen in on the conversations and see what I can learn off of him Tony Stewart having some fun here at the Mopar Million First, Tony's dad, Nelson, takes care of that two-car team. Tony, a former USAC Sprint Car champion, wins the championship as an owner in his first season. And it's important enough for him to come here once, fly back to the NASCAR race, and then back here again tonight. Well, let's get more of the stories from the pit area. Dave Argerbright standing by downstairs with another key figure. There are many surprises this weekend at the Mopar Million. People we didn't really expect to see in the A-Main, but one man we did expect to see toward the front, Jack Haudenshield. You've got a lot of laps at this great racetrack. What do you have in store for this field at the Mopar Million? Well, we uh, start third row outside. We got a good start in position, so uh, I felt good yesterday in the heat race, and, uh, you know, I think we got the car pretty nice. Uh, and uh, we're just we're just going to try and keep up with them there for a while and hopefully hopefully we can be there at the end. You know this has been called the greatest sprint car race in history. Excitement to be a part of it. Yeah, I sure am. I just unbelievable to see all the different caliper drivers here from uh, you know all different uh, series and uh, a lot of good drivers and uh, you know we're just uh, happy to be here uh, with them and uh, racing. Normally this guy likes to laugh and cut up. I think we're seeing a game face right now. Pretty darn serious down there. Yes, he is, and this is a serious race. He was very fast last night up on the cushion. A lot of uh, whether he can win or not will depend on where this racetrack is fast tonight. Not much cushion left after all the racing we've had here the last couple of nights. Well, let's hear from the national champion, Vince. Here's the guy that's having a tremendous year, J.J. Yale, threatening to win the Triple Crown all in the same season. And his future, well, I'd like to have his future. Many in the, many, if you're in a race car, you'd like to have the future of this guy. And I was just kidding him about, hey, you don't need the money. Let one of these other guys win, and everybody will take the money, won't they? <laughs> Absolutely, especially this payday. But, uh, you know, the Mopar Twister's been running really good. Uh, got a brand new car for this race. Uh, we won with a couple weeks ago, but uh, wasn't exactly what we were looking for yesterday. We have to start in the middle of the field, and uh, the racetrack's going to be a little one lane. It's going to be hard to pass. So for the kind of money they put up, we'll have to root away the front. You're not all the way at the back, but uh, starting toward the back a little bit. Uh, tell us how you're going to get to the front. Uh, hopefully, I just drive by everyone. They'll just move over and let me by. But you know, I don't think that's the case. There's a lot of tough guys here tonight. And uh, the racetrack's got rubber in one corner, and uh, the other corner's still pretty slick. But uh, it's not going to take very long for both corners. It's going to get real fast. It's going to get difficult to pass. But you know, hopefully, we got enough Mopar power underneath us. We can just drive by these guys down straight away. It's been billed as the greatest sprint car race ever. What's more important, the winner's check or the prestige of winning the Mopar Million? That, it's going to be a tie. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it'd be awesome to win this race. It's going to be the inaugural one. It's the biggest sprint car event ever held, you know, obviously by the purse. So, uh, you know, to win a race here at Eldora is a lot of fun. Uh, we've been pretty successful here. Hopefully we can do the same thing today. I was joking with Tony Stewart earlier about maybe uh, sharing some insight with you before you go out to run, and he said he would take insight from you. Who's giving it to who? Uh, well, last time we ran here together, I actually crashed him, so he's not going to take it from me. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of right now, uh, you have to be in the middle of the racetrack on three and four and up on the cushion in one and two and, and hope that you find a rubber first and get by everybody. Good luck. Thank you. J.J. Ailey starting on the inside of row seven. 
Nobody better when the big bucks are on the line. Well, that's right, and he sounds like he's got the racetrack all figured out. Let's see how it works come a main time. He's got to come from the seventh row, and in 40 laps, Larry, can you get it done from back there? Oh, you can get it done, but a lot depends on the racetrack itself. Well, we'll be back in just a moment. Brad Knopfsinger will start on the pole tonight. There you see the SCRA logo on his machine. Brad, a silver crown regular. He gets a shot at the big bucks tonight at Eldora. We'll have the A main for you coming up. Back on speed at Eldora Speedway. Before we settle in for the A feature here in the Eldora Million, let's take you back, show you the final three qualifying heats from Friday night. Rick Zeal had the pole in the eighth heat with Rob Cheney. Mitch Wismiller in the seven, Jimmy Stinson. Bud Kading at Boston Reed in the third row. Sean Robinson, young Jimmy Laser started eighth last night in the eighth heat. Justin Marble and David Steele in the fifth row. Pearson Mosley in the sixth. Boy, these guys have their work cut out for them, Larry. Top two make it to the A. That's right, and it's very important to run in that top two because the A main is what pays all the money. And you can see everybody once again on that start making some sort of a move trying to get the advantage. Rob Cheney took advantage in that silver number nine. He got a great start there. Moving in right behind him is Jimmy Stinson in the 84. With two to go, let's see how this one shakes out now. Blue tire smoke pouring off that blue car. Yeah, that blue car is Rick Zeal trying to hang on, but uh, getting a lot of challenges back there. Austin Reed doesn't look like he's going, getting forward too fast. Final trip around the half mile high banks. That is the 9X of Rob Cheney out in front. And Jimmy Stinson right behind him. Those look like they're going to be the two teams, the two drivers, the two cars that will make it to the A main out of the eighth qualifying heat. Checkered flag in the air, 18 in the books, and it is Rob Cheney, your winner. And Jimmy Stinson comes home in second spot. So a lot of a shuffling early on. Bud Cady, Rick Zeal had to go to the B. Mitch Wissmiller got a shot at the C earlier tonight. Cheney and Stinson, though, will go for the big bucks. Well, that's a good job by Rob Cheney. He did exactly what he had to do. Ninth heat last night. Jared Wilson on the pole, the 7J. Richard the Gas Man Griffin alongside. Brian Gerster and Jerry Coons, Travis Rylett and Russ Gamester. Kevin Briscoe in the fourth row with Alex Shanks. As we move back and show you the final couple, Travis Welpot in the 54 and Mark Carey. Eric Shively and Kerry Foz. And here we go. Show you some highlights from Friday night's ninth qualifying heat. And the Gas Man gets a good start on the outside. That red number 50 car, he takes over the lead right away. And he's up on the cushion and standing on the gas. That is his SCRA ride. There's Coons in that 10C, the black car with the yellow numerals. How about Russ Gamester in the number two, Lynn Reed's car on the bottom? That's a brand new Twister car. First time out for that car. So uh, we'll see how that goes. They were extremely happy with it in the heat or in the qualifying. Travis Rylat there in the white number 29. He's a 360 sprint car star. Usually uses a wing down in the southwest. He's right on the top side doing pretty well too. Look how straight Russ Gamester is. He yeah. goes through that corner, just keeps it straight as an arrow, and uh, blows on by. Jared Wilson there in the black 7J, running in second spot now. Gamester with all that pavement experience, does that help him out on a night like this, Norrell? And the Silver Crown experience helps him out because he runs a lot of Silver Crown cars here, and the racetrack gets like this when they're on the Silver Crown here, which was a lot of rubber down. Gamester trying to work the bottom and get by Jared Wilson and make it to the A. Russ not a regular on the Sprint Car Tour. He is a regular in Silver Crown competition. Former national midget champion, I believe in 1989, if memory serves. There's Ryland in the 29, trying to get up and make a run in second spot. Looks like Gamester has it. Yeah, he's really getting a good run off of turn number four. There's rubber that's being laid down there in the middle of turn four. It's not as much up in turns one and two, but enough to stay in front of him. Richard Griffin, long gone in the 50 car. Here he is, riding on the high side, heading toward victory lane, perhaps in a spot in the A main. Final lap around Eldora, and Gamester's right with him. Well, the racetrack just picks up more rubber, more rubber. Gamester gained on him all through the race, and right here near the end, because of that rubber, you can see Griffin gets loose, he gets a hold of it, and he pulls off there and pulls off the win. Gamester on the inside for the checkered flag in the 19th. Richard Griffin will make the A, he'll run second in the 50. And this is unlike any racetrack Griffin sees out of the West Coast. That's right, mostly real wet, heavy racetracks out there, and uh, probably didn't have the car set up quite right for the end of that race. Ryland and Shanks went to the B. Let's show you what happened to the 10th heat Friday night. Brandon Petty in the Arctic Cat car. Veteran Brad Knopfsinger, rare sprint car start these days on row one. Ricky Gaunt in the 6G and Hud Cohn in the 20. Matt Westfall with Troy Klein from the West Coast in the third row. Steve Cerniak out of Pennsylvania. Rick Hayden, Ken Wolders in row five. Brad Vogler and Duffy Smith in the sixth row. And Rodney Stone, shotgun on the field. And again, two drivers will make it to the A. 
Yes, two and oh, oh. contact. Hunt Cone in trouble. Yeah, he got up over Patty. He's lucky he didn't get upside down, but uh, he kept the thing under the control and stayed on the gas. That was important. Brad Knopfsinger, who's really struggled in the Silver Crown Series this year, but he's the early leader. That's a West Coast car, that blue number 11. Brandon Penny gets a good run down on the inside, and that rubber couldn't quite pull it off that time, but I think uh, Knopfsinger better start paying attention if he wants to keep the lead. Fast forward a little bit, eight to go, battling for position. Remember, the top two make it for second spot. Now, this is Ricky Gaunt in the 6G. A little further back, we've got plenty of action. Hud Cone trying to get closer to the front, but Gaunt gets by Petty, and Petty comes back at him. It comes right back at him, but uh, Gaunt has a little bit of a run, stays up on top, and again, when you're on top down here in one or two, it seems to be faster. Matt Nof Westfall there in the middle. Yes, and Knopfsinger is a quick learner. He got right in the groove where these guys were running as pulled away from him. Down the back stretch of the final lap, Knopfsinger, here comes Gaunt in the 6G. Starting positions will be decided by whether you run first or second, but Knopfsinger and Gaunt, most importantly, make it to the A feature tonight at Eldor. Yeah, but Knopfsinger, by virtue of winning the 10th heat, will start on the pole for the A main. That's a big, big win. Gaunt has to start, what, in the 10th row? Yes, he starts 20th. There's the way they set it up here. The winner starts first. The guy who ran second starts 20th. But most importantly, Knopfsinger and Gaunt have a shot at the $200,000. We'll be back with the A main at Eldor. It is the most prestigious sprint car race in the history of the sport. The 26 cars are pushing off now. It is the Mopar Million. $200,000 to the winner. And not just the big paycheck, but the honor of knowing that you are the one that won the one and only Mopar Million. That sets the stage pretty well, Larry Rice. Certainly does. Look at Vince. Pretty brave guy down here <laughs> with 26 sprint cars on either side of him. Field starting to roll. And you can feel the electricity. Packed house here as you would expect at Eldora Speedway. Earl Baltus has been talking about this for a long time. This has been more than a year in the planning. It almost seemed like we'd never get to this time. Well, that's right. As we said earlier, there's people from 47 states, a couple foreign countries, drivers from 21 states. I mean, they're all here, and this is what they've been waiting on all week long. All the superstars from the United States Auto Club, invaders from the SCRA, from the All-Stars, from the Outlaws, and many, many more. And Boy, you can look at this entire field of 26. There are some surprising names here, but there are some very, very fast teams. National champion J.J. Yaley, Dickie Gaines, Tracy Hines, who was the fast qualifier, Dave Darlin. The list goes on and on. It certainly does. And the driver's meeting for this race was probably the most emotional I've ever seen. When they introduced Earl Baldus, everybody stood and cheered. There was probably 500 people at this driver's meeting. Mark Jessup carries our onboard camera the 14J. He lines up outside row seven in the 14th position. There you see the Kokomo Honda car of uh, Russ Gamester alongside as they do the traditional four wide salute to the fans. Brad Knopf, singer from Charlotte, North Carolina, Russ Gamester from Indiana. Make up row number one, Gamester in the two car. Second row, Rob Chaney in that silver nine X and all-star star Dean Jacobs in his own number 29. Row number three, Jonathan Bennett in the 54, won a heat race and the wild child, Jack Howdenschild in car number four. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Bill Rose and Stevie Smith start back there in row number four. Stevie Smith, never in a non-wing car before. Critter, Critter Malone, Malone, yeah. Big day for him, along with Kevin Huntley in row number five. Some guys that uh, you might not expect to see or hear. Dave Darland, a one-off drive, perhaps, and Keith Koontz's second final express car. Seventh row, champion J.J. Yaley and Mark Jessup. J.J. has to come from 13th in that brand-new Twister. Dickie Gaines was quick tonight. Yeah, he was quick. He's going to be uh, very tough, although he's got to start a long way back. Todd Kane alongside Mike Brecht and Jimmy Stinson in the ninth row. The gas man, Richard Griffin and Ricky Gaunt making up the tenth row, and they came from one of the preliminary features. Tracy Hines and Tyler Walker get in on time. Yeah, they do, and it's a tough break for them to have to start way back there, but they just didn't have good luck in their heat races, that's all. Drivers out of the B. You saw Brian Tyler, Danny Smith, Bud Kading, shotgun on the field. 26 drivers, $850,000 in the feature alone. Glad to have you with us. We're underway on speed. Darlin goes dive bombing to the inside to gain several spots in that 71 car. Your leader is Gamester, and here comes Dean Jacobs. Dean Jacobs on the bottom, Gamester on the top. I oh, he, he brushes the wall a little bit. I thought we'd see Gamester trying to stay on the bottom of the racetrack. But Dean Jacobs comes out with the lead on lap number one. Gamester tucks in alongside. Well, 
Right now, Dean Jacobs got a great start. He's pulled away to a several car lengths lead. So we, I don't know. We're going to have to see if this racetrack takes rubber, though. Then that where games is running is going to improve. Third spot is Rob Cheney. Bill Rose is fourth. Houghton is fifth in that four car. There's Stevie Smith back there, sixth in the Black Bandit, the number 19 out of Pennsylvania. And look at Dickie Gaines. He's gained a lot of spots very early in this event. Man, oh man, he was started 15th. He's already in the top 10. Brad Dofsinger was on the pole in that blue 11 car. He's back pedaled quickly. Mark Jessup started 14th. He's lost a spot to 15th. It is early. Everybody's hunting for a place to run here. Well, they certainly are. You can hear Jessup. The throttle control is so important on this racetrack. You're not flat out. You really got to touch that throttle tenderly in order to get the traction. Jessup's got the elbows up, has to wipe off the face shield. A lot of dust here in the early going. Uh, it is a little bit dusty, but uh, this racetrack is going to settle down. You've got guys running from top to bottom right now, and that's why the dust is coming up. Dickie Gaines on the move quickly in that yellow trim second Hoffman car, also carrying the 69. He's up there in front battling for fifth with Bill Rose. Yeah, Bill Rose trying to get back by him, and Stevie Smith, He's trying everywhere. He hasn't run a lot of these. Look at this. He goes to the high side and goes around Billy Rose. Gaines has come from 15th starting spot to crack the top five early in the going. That is a fast race car tonight. Now Smith and Rose, they're fighting for six. Smith has the spot. Well, Stevie Smith, doesn't. Uh, as we said, he's never run a non-wing car. He's run Eldora a lot, though. He knows this racetrack, and that'll be to his advantage. Dean Jacobs is your leader. Russ Games through second. You heard Tony Stewart say earlier, the ability to keep your car straight and not be intimidated by the speeds could be the keys here tonight. Yeah, and you can see Dean Jacobs already. He's got the back end hanging out just a little bit more than he really wants. I don't think his car is quite tight enough because uh, especially if it takes rubber, that's not going to be good. And all the tire smoke pouring off the right rear is not a good sign. You could certainly wear a tire out here in 40 laps. Well, you certainly can. We've seen that happen before. Meanwhile, Russ Gamesher just keeps down on that bottom side. And look at this, Houghtonshild goes to the bottom. Jack Houghtonshild in that white number four, unheralded when he came in here. Won a heat going away, very strong. He's working his way by Gamesher, trying to get second. Well, he gave a little slide job. Gamesher came right back and took it away from him. Houghtonshild has won 17 times here at Eldora, so he's a real veteran. He knows this place. As you pointed out earlier, he's won the big prize a couple of times. He's won the historical big one worth 100000 He's won the King's Royal, I believe, more than once, and that pays 50000 to win, so he knows what it's like to bring home one of Earl's big checks. Well, right now, he's having his hands full just trying to get around Russ Gamester because he's tried a couple of tricks, and so far, Gamester's been able to hold him off. Child makes the move on the bottom, makes it stick for now on Gamester, but Russ comes back at him. Yeah, that three and four once again is taking on rubber, and the Gamester gets in that rubber coming off and is able to pull back past Hoddenschild. But Hoddenschild is running the cushion up in one and two, and he's getting a big run down that back straightaway. He'll try it again on the inside, looking for second spot. How about Dickie Gaines, meantime, continues his march toward the front. He's working, trying to get fourth spot away there from Rob Cheney in the 9X. Yeah, Rob Cheney's hanging right in there, but Dickie Gaines appears to have one of the fastest cars on the racetrack right now. Rob Child again to the bottom of the racetrack in three and four, slides up in front of Gamester. Russell trying to return the favor for second spot. Yeah, he tried to get that car stopped in the rubber. You can see he lost the front end. He tried to get it woed enough to stay in that rubber, but when he didn't, he slid past it. Gamester went right back past him again. Jonathan Bennett in the 54, and here comes J.J. Yaley. Now, J.J. started way back in the seventh row as well. Darland and John Stanbro fighting for 12th spot. Dave Darland, oh, oh, touches wheels. You don't want to do that very many times here. He tried to get under him, couldn't quite do it, and uh, just made a slight touch. He hits him a little harder, and there's going to be a crash. Dave Darlin, one of a handful of guys who've won the USAC career triple crown. He's been a sprint car champion, silver crown and midgets as well. Trying to work his way up. Glad to be driving for Keith Coons here tonight. Meantime, Houghtonshout puts that four car up on the high side and gets around Gamester. Yeah, this time it looks like he made it stick because once he led him going into turn number one, he's got a, he is running faster in one and two than Gamester is. All this battling, good news for Dean Jacobs, who continues to lead in the 29. Gamester back to second briefly. Gamester just does not give up. He has a nice groove down there in three and four, and he's really been taking advantage of it. Oh, look at that. Dickie Gaines almost got into the back of Hoddenschild. That couldn't have been good. Stevie Smith runs fifth in the Black Bandit car, the 19. 
Russ Gamester now pressuring Jacobs for the lead. Gaines moves up and challenges for third. I think he's got it. Yeah, Dean Jacobs just keeps hanging on. Uh, that race car looks awfully far sideways to me, but so far, you know, he's widened up. He's kept everybody else behind him. Russ Gamester searching for running room on the bottom of the racetrack, and here comes Gamester going for the lead. Right in the middle of the racetrack. Right here's where he gets a hold of that loose dirt up on the top, though, and usually gains an advantage down the back straightaway. Dickie Gaines in the 69 car trying to move in as well. He's very close. Jacobs back to the point as they come out of four. Well, you can tell Gaines is really getting good traction because he's yeah. lifting that left front up. Oh, Look at this. Dive bombs two cars and grabs the lead. Dickie Gaines from 15th to the point. Wow, he went by both of those guys. Those guys are running really quick, too, up there in front, and he blew by both of them. Dickie Gaines in the second Hoffman entry, running as a teammate to Tracy Hines here tonight, has come from 15th to lead, and Gamester now moves to second. Wow, would this be huge for Dickie Gaines? Well, it's going to be huge for anybody, but especially for him. And how about Stevie Smith, his first ride in a non-wing sprint car? He is up to fourth in his own family-operated car. Bob Cheney hanging right in there, but Dickie Gaines certainly looks like the man to beat right now. Boy, that is an impressive run from 15. They have got the setup perfect, at least for the first half. We'll be back with more at Eldor. Back on speed, the Mopar Million, the A-Main, worth $850,000. J.J. Ailey in the 20 car, working the bottom, trying to climb up through the field. Well, you can see there, Kevin Huntley, Jacobs, Rose, all those guys, three abreast down there. Looks like, oh, Billy Rose slides right up and touches Kevin Huntley. And Yaley works the slide job from the bottom in that radical new twister. D. Jacobs, who led early, gets shuffled further back in that blue number 29. Yeah, that loose race car is not doing him any favors right now. They just uh, missed the setup a little bit, and it's going to cost him. Battling for 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th, Jacobs. Jonathan Fenner, Todd Kane is there, Dave Darland in the mix. Yaley, meantime, hooking up. He's starting to head toward the front. Yeah, Dean Jacobs is kind of hanging up some guys. There goes Todd Kane to the outside, so he's going to get that spot. And here comes Dave Darlin in the same position trying to get around. Bud Kading started at the back of the field in that white 29. He's rim riding his way into good. Oh, contact. Darlin goes around. Oh, Stanbro. He several almost, other cars. He almost got upside down. Yeah, several cars got into that thing. But, man, oh, man, Darlin was the first guy that spun, but I don't think he actually started that thing. Earlier, Brian Tyler won a race to make the field. That's his sixth car that's hung up on top of Darlin's machine. Jimmy Stinson also involved in the black number 84. So we've got a caution on the speedway. Stanbro, Darlin, Tyler, and Stinson all safe, but uh, a lot of contact. You've got to figure some things are bent, at least, on those races. Yeah, cars. I would think there's going to be a couple of them out, especially Stanbro, who got so far up in the air. Let's take another look at it, see if we can figure out exactly what happened. Looks like Bud Kading comes down. He starts the incident when he gets together with Jacobs. Then uh, Darlin spun. Everybody else just kind of smacked into the bunch. Really. Innocent bystanders here. Kading was quick on the high side. He kind of runs over Dean Jacobs here a little bit. Yeah, no doubt about it. He just had a big run, ran right into the back of him. Darlin, the victim of circumstances, as was everybody else back there. Here at Eldora, once something happens in front of you, it's awfully hard to miss the crash. The speeds are so high here that even if you see it in plenty of time, getting on the watch what happened here with Mark Jessup trying to avoid this. Yeah, Mark Jessup sees it up there. Look, it's a half a straightaway or half a corner in front of him. He still barely gets out of it and misses the crash. But Jessup's okay, and we are under caution. 25 laps complete, 15 to go. Record crews out on the fourth turn here at Eldora trying to get everybody separated. We'll be back. Back on speed, Dave Darlin's crew of the Vital Express team for Keith Coons. They've gotten the 71 checked over and refired after that incident. Take a look at your restart leader, Dickie Gaines. Jack Houdenshield will line up in second spot. Stevie Smith will go third. Fourth spot to the 9X of Cheney. Bill Rose in the 6R fifth. If this was a horse race, Larry, and we had a form chart coming in here, who would have thought Dickie Gaines would be in the driver's seat with less than 20 to go? Especially starting 15th. You're not supposed to be able to pass at Eldora when it gets slick like this, and he just blew by guys like they were screwed to the racetrack. I mean, he really has done a great job, and they've got that car hooked up for him. The big question is, though, he's still got a few laps to lead this baby. Jack Houdenchild lining up in second spot. The lap car, Brad Knopfsinger in the 11, goes to the bottom. There's the two car, Stevie Smith back there in the black band at the 19. Some surprising names toward the front of the field, all gunning for the $200,000 winner's check. 
Here comes Outshield in that four car. He's starting to reel in gains a little bit. Yeah, and everybody's figured out that the middle of the racetrack has rubber down there in three and four, so it's going to be tough to pass anybody down there. They're all heading for that very narrow strip of rubber. Up here in one and two, though, they're still running the cushion and the middle of the racetrack, and I think we've yet to see where the fastest place is going to be. Well, one guy who's done a pretty good job of finding a place to run, J.J. Yaley up from the seventh row, fighting for sixth, getting around the car of Bill Rose there. That's the white number six. Here comes Kevin Huntley in that five right behind him. That's right. Now then they're going to turn trying to run down uh, Russ Gamester up there in the two car. Look at Yaley. Looks like he got a great run down in there. Went low. Slides up in front of Gamester, but uh, I don't know. Out of turn four. Yaley gets by Gamester. Rose in the six. Huntley in the five. They're fighting for positions. Trying to get toward the top five. Your leader, Dickie Gaines. Jack Outchild right with him in second spot. Look at that. Rose gets yeah. a big slide job to Gamester, but he couldn't make it work, and he uh, he lost that spot back. So Gamester's staying right in the middle of the racetrack, but he doesn't seem to be as fast down in one and two. That's where everybody's getting their advantage on him. Got to be impressed with Bill Rose in the 6R. Again, not a regular on the USAC Tour this season. Same with Kevin Huntley in the 5. They've been quick all night. That's right. Bill Rose hasn't run very much at all this summer that I know of anyway, and uh, still very quick. And look at this. Oh, one car in trouble. We've got a car spinning up in turn four. Looks like Bud Kading in trouble again. Bud Kading up into the wall. He punched it pretty hard with that right front corner, so I'm sure he's going to be out of this race and uh, probably not very happy about it on him. Well, that's the second time I think that Bud actually ran over a car in front of him, Larry. And you know, there's so much at stake here, prestige, money, the emotions really run high in sprint car Well, they certainly do, and right here he's going to have a little word. Now nah, he just says uh, what happened and uh, keeps on going. But you're right. There's a lot of money at stake. Your emotions run high, and when you're sitting in the cockpit, sometimes things look like they happen a little differently than you see them on a replay. And we'll take another look at this and see what sent uh, Bud Kading's car around as they came down into turn three for the two white cars, and there he is going up over another machine. Yeah, he goes up over Bennard uh, and then goes out and punches the wall pretty hard. You can see uh, torsion bars and stuff flying out of that car, but we couldn't tell whether the red car slowed down and caused him to run up over Bennard or not. That might have been what started it, but either way, he ends up in the wall, and he's not very happy. And uh, Kevin Doty there in the 25 nearly went over. There was contact at the bottom of the track as everybody got on the brakes when the yellow lights came out. Well, Bud's up there working with the track crew trying to rock the car and get it out of gear so they can at least remove it from the speedway. We'll be back with more at Eldora. Back on speed, coverage of the Eldora Mopar Million, the legendary Eldora Speedway in Ohio. John Stanbro heading back up on the racetrack after that caution, the incident involving Bud Kading's machine over in turn four. Getting ready for a restart, Larry Rice. saw this money on the line. Everybody's going to be on the gas hard. Yeah, and Stanbro's going to have to go to the back, of course, after being involved in that earlier incident. But now then, we're going to see if Dickie Gaines can hold off a hard-charging Jack Hoddenschild. It's going to be tough. Hoddenschild goes to the top, Gaines back down in the middle. Stevie Smith in the black 19 right there in third, watching to see if either of the leaders will bobble. And Hoddenschild around the high side bounces it off the wall and goes to the lead. He has made that look so easy, but believe me, bouncing that thing off the wall over there in two is a very dangerous thing to do, and he's been doing it lap after lap. Look at this. Gaines tries to go back under him. Can't do it, though. Dickie Gaines searching for grip on the bottom. Oh, we've got a couple of cars hooked together. Todd Kane up on the nerf bar of Kevin Huntley's machine. That'll probably bring out another caution. Yeah, they're not going to get unhooked, and if, as long as they're on the racetrack, they're uh, running way too slow, and you can see everybody's slowing down. The yellow flag is out. You can see Kane gesturing from the cockpit, Huntley waving back at him there. It's <laughs> one of the more humorous incidents we've seen here this weekend. Yeah, neither one of them very happy right now. They were both running pretty good. They'll get him unhooked. I don't think there's a lot of damage, but they will have to go to the back of the pack. That's the bad thing. Crew members from both teams running over to see if they can separate the two cars. Kane saying, hey, lift this thing off of here. I need to get back up on the racetrack. Yeah, not a very happy camper right now, <laughs> but, uh, you know, not much you can do. Those bumpers sometimes do get uh, collected like that. Well, they'll roll Todd Kane's 1WA. Kevin Huntley getting a shove in the five car as well. Looks like Critter Malone just came to pit road, Larry. Yeah, Critter Malone's coming in there. I'm not sure. It looks like he's got some suspension trouble. It looks like that uh, left front is uh, pretty low on that car, so he's probably got a problem with the suspension on that trip car. And pole sitter Brad Offsinger with some problems in his car as well. So, Caution immediately on the speedway. We ran one lap, but what a move by Howdenschild on the high side to get the lead. 
Yeah, and they did complete that lap, so he will get to stay out front. That's a great break for him because if they'd thrown that yellow just a little sooner, he would have had to go back and do that all over again. And believe me, it wouldn't be as easy the second time. Earhart gesturing there. You can see Kane saying, bring that push truck up. Here's a look at what happened for Mark Jessup's onboard camera. Yeah, they just ran into each other. Clear on the left-hand side of your screen. They ran into each other, getting into that corner, and they couldn't get unhooked. <laughs> I don't think uh, Huntley knew exactly what was going on there for a minute. Kane still trying to get push started there. I'm not so sure if he uh, can't get that car locked in gear so that they can turn the motor over and get him restarted. Brad Nofsinger getting a push, and here's work going on on Bud Kading's 29 car. Yeah, after that incident with the wall, he's trying to get that thing back together. You know, this is a big paying event, and you pay a, it pays a lot even if you're not up front. So he wants to get back out there and gain some spots. So much at stake here tonight. Not USAC National Sprint Car points, but big money. $850,000 up total in the feature. And the higher you finish, the more money you get. Yeah, it's not just uh, $50 between uh, 13th and 14th. That's more <laughs> like 1000 bucks. So they want to get out there and get as much as that as they can. Looks as though they've bolted some new front end parts on the 29 of Bud Kading, and they're going to strap him back into that race car and try to push that thing off. So the Lone City 29 car will be able to rejoin the field at the back of the pack for the last 10 laps. But, Larry, we've got a huge shootout, I think, coming up. Howden Child, Dickie Gaines, and Stevie Smith all nose to tail. Yes, and Gaines is going to go into turn one, try to get on the bottom side and slide up in front of him. I don't know whether he can do that or not because Hoddenschild is so fast in one and two. And the last time he tried it, the car seemed to bind up on him on the bottom. It sure did. All right, we will be back for the restart at Eldora. More of the Mopar Million. Brian Tyler's going to have to change the left rear. Keep it here. Back at Eldora, ready for a restart. Ten laps to go. Dickie Gaines and Jack Hoddenschild for the lead. Nicky Gaines goes to the bottom, tries to slide up, but Hot Shield's having none of it. He gets up there on that cushion and gets that run down the back straightaway like he has all night. The wild child, one of the greats here at Eldora over the years. Here comes the unheralded Gaines, trying to race his way back around him and get the lead back. Well, once again, the top is the fastest in one and two. The bottom or the middle down at three and four. Gaines takes advantage of it three and four, but Hot's just too quick down there at one and two. The Pennsylvanian Stevie Smith and the black band at the 19 trying to get around Gaines, and he makes the move for second spot. That was a rare mistake that Dickie Gaines has made tonight. He got too high down there in three and four, and he just lets uh, Stevie Smith go on by him. National champion J.J. Ailey has brought Tony Stewart's Mopar machine, the 20 up to fourth position. Great run, though, by Howden Shield. Great run for Stevie Smith and Dickie Gaines. Three guys, Larry, you wouldn't have picked in a million years to run up front of this thing. No, that's right. And you got to remember, J.J. Yaley started pretty deep in the field, so he's done a great job to get up there this far. But Dickie Gaines, he started 15. Wow. Now the shuffle's on for positions further back. Russ Gamester in the two. Jonathan Bennard in the 54. Bennard's had problems. He's been in the wall. Here comes Tracy Hines up into the top 10. Mark Jessup is back there. There's so much money at stake for every finishing spot. If you could pass one more card, it might be worth an extra five grand. That's right. And Tracy Hines has come a long way. Remember, after that crash, they went home and worked on it. They didn't have one hot lap in that car, so he had no idea what it was going to be like. But they've obviously done a great job setting that car up. Jessup back there in 11th spot on the 14J. Good run for the young driver tonight. Just to make the show here at Eldora is worth a minimum of $10,000. A great pay night and a great achievement for a lot of these teams. There's Hines working his way up by Gamester. Yeah, and he's hanging right in there with some pretty strong competition, too. I mean, Hines, those guys right in front of him. He's uh, Kevin Doty right behind him. Some tough guys. Oh, looked like the two-car Gamester got up against the fence. Allowed two cars to go by him. Hines moving to eighth. This is eighth, ninth, and tenth on the racetrack. Jessup runs 11th. Oh, now Jessup's going to go up there and flirt Whoa. with that wall. Well, they say you're not going fast here if you don't get that right rear up against the fence, and that's what's enabled Jack Houdenschild to just run away here in the final couple of laps. He is right up on the top. And turn two here to Eldor is probably the trickiest dirt track corner I've ever run because that wall kind of goes out and then it comes back in. So to get that wet dirt, you've really got to get out there, touch that wet dirt, and then suck it back down inside a little bit. Three to go. Darlin trying to work his way around Kevin Doty. Darlin in the 71. Back in 13th position. Doty is 12th. Yeah, and those guys, of course, Darlin got stopped one time, so he's come a long way back up through there after getting spun out there earlier in the event. He was in that first tangle with Bud Kading and with Brian Tyler. Here comes Jessup in the 14J, trying to work his magic and get around Darlin. 
looks like that's the Ricky Gaunt car back there as well. Right, he's trying to learn, and he has learned a lot, I'm sure, because these guys, uh, he's followed guys like Darlin here most of the race. Leader continues to be Houghtonchild, and here we are, last time around, Tracy Hines battling. Houghtonchild's got Stevie Smith all over him as they come off turn four. Stevie Smith has just been coming on really strong the last three or four laps. Jack Houghtonchild better be thankful. It's only 40 and not a 50-lap race. The Wild Child wins another one at Eldora, the biggest purse ever. $200,000 will go to Jack Houghtonchild out of Worcester, Ohio. Stevie Smith runs second worth 125 k Dickie Gaines comes home third, a very big payday. Gaines just picking up that ride in the second Hoffman car. Yeah, and he's got to be very happy with that finish. Jack Houghton-Child the winner. And I know there are a lot of fans here very excited to see him in victory lane. Back at Eldora, Jack Houghton-Child the winner. Larry, I wouldn't have thought that earlier tonight. Well, he looked really good last night. A lot of people picked him to win, but uh, he proved him right. A surprise in USAC non-wing competition. Our winners with Dave. I don't think I've ever held my breath for 40 laps before. Jack Haudenshield, your career dates back almost 30 years now. Is this at the Mopar Million, is this your finest moment? Well, I'd say, I'd say this, top, this tops them all. This is, a, you know, just a good race to win. And it's, you know, it's a good uh, group of guys, uh, you know, just unbelievable head drivers from everywhere. So we're just real happy to win it. Were you at all concerned when in the middle stage of that race, Dickie Gaines could pull away just a little bit? Were oh, you yeah. concerned? Yeah, I definitely was. He was getting off the corners better than I was, and I had to go up and uh, I had to use the fence there to get around him, and uh, there wasn't too much up there. So we were just lucky enough to get around him up there, and then we got back down in the rubber. What's it mean to you? You've won the greatest race in the history of sprint car racing. Your name is going to be right there at the top. What does that mean to you right now? Well, I don't know. It's it's just unbelievable. And it, it probably won't sink into Lamar. So uh, uh, it's just unbelievable. And it's a non-wing race. And, uh, you know, we always like to run with the non-wing guys. And uh, we used to do quite a bit of it when we first started. And then we got away from it for quite a few years. And, and uh, then we got back. So uh, uh, we're just real happy to be back in the saddle. Got plans for all that money? Yeah, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Put it in the bank, I guess. If you don't, I can come over and give you some yeah. ideas. Okay, thank you. It's a great win for Jack Audenshield. Well, he certainly did a nice job, and he did use the fence, man. He bumped that thing a lot off of turn two, and that paid off for him. Showing you why they call him the wild child. Eldora is his home playground, and he certainly did the job here all weekend long. Jack Audenshield, the winner. Maybe a bigger surprise, the runner-up, Stevie Smith with Vince Welch. Stevie Smith finishing second. Your first time at a non-wing sprint last night, and you come back and uh, finish second tonight in the Mopar Million. Wow, what a weekend. Yeah, I think they call that beginner's luck. I tell you, you know, the, my dad and the crew there, they gave me a perfect race car. All I had to do is try to keep it off the fence. And the Goodyear tires, fellas, I don't know, but the, we get the car working, the tires seem really good. I, I, honestly, I think they might have been the best tire tonight. I know you have a lot of success with that wing on the car, but after this kind of night, you might want to think, take that thing off more often. Well, they were all asking me that. Are you going to run more races without the wing? I said, hell no. I'm, I can't wait to get that wing back on, but I might change my mind. Congratulations. 125 grand, not a bad payday. No, I'm, I'm really happy with that. I tell you, this team needed that, and that's the most I've ever won at one time. And, you know, I, I went for it there. I mean, I was on Hod's bumper, but he just drove a heck of a race. That's a career for a lot of guys in the uh, in the payroll department. Congratulations. What a run. Okay, thank you. Stevie Smith, second tonight at the Mopar Million. The guy who's raced mostly regionally on the East Coast this year, they ran big stagger and a narrow winged front end. Yes, they did. They didn't run a car that you would thought would have done well here tonight, but I think he's right. The tires were a big difference, maybe. Show you the rest of the order. Kevin Doty, 11th. Dave Garland, 12th. Ricky Gaunt, Mike Brecht, 16th. Kane, Tyler Walker, Richard Griffin, Critter Malone rounding out the top 20. Well, the third place finisher tonight. What a run for Dickie Gaines in a pickup ride. First time for the Hoffmans, Dave Argabright. I don't mean to say this in the wrong way, but when you made that move to go from about fourth to first, I thought this moment here, Dickie Gaines became a race driver. You almost had this thing won. What happened? Well, the, after that caution, I don't know what happened. It just wasn't sticking going in the corner. It looked like maybe the right rear was going down some. I don't know, the Hoosier tires are working well. Uh, I want to thank the Hoffmans for giving the opportunity to run their Pringles. Kroger, you know, the, they just, uh, it's a great opportunity. I just, I just can't thank them enough. The laps were winding down, and you're out front in the greatest sprint car race in history. What was going through your mind? I was just trying to stay calm. That's the only thing. I just try to keep it smooth and just, try, you know, stay calm and just forget about the money. Just try to, you know, 
keep her up front, but it just didn't happen. What a moment for Dickie Gaines, third place. Well, you can see the emotion, the smile just wouldn't go away running oh, third. Man, he has to be happy. 100 grand to him is an awful lot of money. It is to anybody, but look at Earl and Bernice giving Jack Hodden Child his $200,000 check. An amazing event here this weekend. The first and probably the only Boat Bar Million. Some of the sights that we've enjoyed this weekend. Earl welcoming us here earlier. The place has been packed for a couple of days. Incredible action both nights. That's right. They lined up here for about a week in advance for this event, and they weren't disappointed. It was one heck of a race. Several drivers go home disappointed with damaged race cars, but the biggest check in sprint car history goes home with a wild child, Jack Hottenshell. For Larry Rice, Vince Welch, and Dave Argerbright, I'm Rick Benjamin. Thanks for watching the Mopar Million on Speed.